questions now. Okay, we are back and you know what time it is. It's time for me to bring someone on to share the screen with me to talk about something good. And not only are we gonna talk about something good, we're gonna look good while we're doing it. Um, I get the pleasure of hosting my friend, Bob Goldfarb. I've known Bob, it's gotta be 30 plus years. We've known each other. He's known me through multiple careers. I love him, I love his wife. They are amazing people. And he has played a very significant role in branding and helping me be who I am and pushing the envelope on wearing great blazers. I welcome the very finely dressed Bob Goldfarb. It's your chance to tell us something good, my friend. Well, hello, Steve. It's always good to see you. I wish I was seeing you in person because sure. you know, we all miss that a little bit. Uh, so I'll tell you a couple of things that are really good right now. Um, as you may be aware, I had a little health issues in May, got those under control, working on that. So I'm feeling a lot healthier than you I was. You look great. Before. You look awesome. <laughs> yeah, I lost lost about 15 pounds. And uh, so it's, it's all good and I'm feeling good. And the second thing is, uh, you know, I'm a concierge custom clothier. So I work with my clients on a one-on-one -on -one basis in their homes or office. And considering COVID, uh, a lot of people have been terribly reluctant to have me come to their homes or office uh, with the fear of possibly contracting the virus. But I will say that over the last month or so, business has definitely picked up and some people are opening up and uh, figuring that if somebody hasn't been, you know, has been protecting themselves and has been, you know, watching over, make sure they don't contract the virus, get out too much that they're allowing me in. So I have had appointments. So I'm just thrilled to death to, to have some business again. Uh, it was a rough haul for a couple of months, but um, I was always optimistic that at some point it would come back. And uh, so I'm feeling really, really good about that. That's awesome. I, I want to bring people to, um, I guess it was probably late mar late march maybe first week of april when my order of stuff that i had done for all of my speaking engagements in april had come in i ordered like a half a dozen blazers and you came and delivered them to me in the lobby of my building everybody was all full of masks no one really knew where this would take us and as those who follow me know that i was significantly fuller at that point and uh, the jackets still fit, but they were like, oh, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to button these. So uh, it was a sort of a fun um, exercise, if you will, because now all of my, my blazers fit, they look great. Um, I'm so excited what you have done for me in my career. So why don't you tell our audience, like, how do we know each other? I mean, obviously I know, but I wanna share with the audience how long it goes back and how we've tracked each other's careers and you know, how I think the takeaway is to stay in touch with people because you never know. Exactly. So uh, we were introduced by Mark and Neil Gardner. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, it was at a heat game. And um, and that's how we met. And you and I kind of hit it off. And, you know, then I went and got some phones from ABC Cellular and uh, <laughs> did that kind of thing. And uh, we always stayed in touch over the years and uh, always, you know, enjoyed when we were able to get together. And then about you know, a few years back, so we, like I said, we always stayed in touch. And then a few years back, I walked into Johan Joe's for a meeting and I look across the room and I go, holy shit, there's Steve Noodleberg. What the hell is he doing up here? He doesn't live here. And uh, that's when I found out that you had moved up to West Palm Beach. And uh, I was so excited that we'd be able to see each other more often. And uh, so that's how we met. And that's where we are 30 years later. Yeah, incredible. And really. One uh... of the things you always talk about at LinkedIn like a pro is that one of the things you can do to keep connecting with people is to always send out birthday greetings. And for 30 years, I sent you a birthday greeting. Yes, you did. Your first day before mine. And um, so that's how we stay connected. And, uh, you know, that was pretty awesome. So you've had a successful career. You, like many, have done different things. What would you point to as sort of, and this is part of this tell me something good, 
focusing on the good. What were some of the keys to your career to being successful? I think I have an idea of what they are, but I'd love to hear your take. So I have reinvented myself for a number of times over the years. Uh, I had a very thriving uh, high-tech recruiting business for 25 years in Silicon Valley. And, um, you know, it went really well until the dot bomb hit. And, you know, what, what's mostly good about me and my personality is my resiliency and the fact that I can bounce back from whatever obstacles I face and either continue on in a, in a, a complementary role to what I've been doing or totally reinvent myself. And so after the recruiting uh, thing kind of came to an end, and unfortunately, I didn't have any business left because the, the uh, vertical market I was involved in really got killed during the dot bomb in the early 2000s. Uh, I was in my 50s, and I said, well, what are you going to do now? And I said, you know, I want to do something I love. And I always loved clothing. I had been a clothes horse since I was like 17 years old. I was, you know, a friend of mine and I, Jimmy, were the only ones at 17 years old that when we went out on a date, we wore a suit and, uh, you know, stuff like that. And you have to think that's, you know, 50 plus years ago. Wow. You know, um, so I always have had a clothes fetish. Uh, Donna will tell you that I have the bigger closet. And I keep telling her it's because she's half my size and she only needs a smaller closet. But the fact of the matter is, is that I'm a clothes horse and I need every inch of space I can get uh, to uh, house all my clothing. So, you know, so I, so what happened was, is I, I was still trying to do a little recruiting on the side, but I needed to have an income and I needed to get some health insurance. I went to work at Nordstrom and uh, in the men's department and uh, was the men's, men's clothing manager uh, almost immediately. And then they promoted me to men's division manager. And then I got moved up to Palm Beach Gardens to open up the new store here in 2006. Wow. And that, and that was our meal ticket out of Miami, Nordstrom pay for us to move. And so that was great. And uh, so I had a 10-year career, let's say. Uh, no, not quite 10. Let's say eight years, eight or nine-year career in uh, – oops, sorry about that. That's um, okay. Uh, a career in, uh, in retail. And then at the end of retail, it was like, you know, I, I don't like retail anymore. I don't like what it's become. Um, and there was a lot of people coming in that really were trying to tell me how I needed to do business, and they really had no clue. So I uh, was in the shoe business at the time, and there is no business like shoe business, but, you know, <laughs> um, but um, so I was in the shoe business, and it was at a bad time, and so I left it and said, you know, I want to just, I'm never going to work for anybody again, and so I decided to start my own custom clothing line, and that was about five and a half years ago. Which so I is, am privately. Uh... I am Which private label, cool. you know, so, so I'm sorry. What were you going to say? I, I just, you know, for me, luck would have it that I moved to Palm Beach. I see you right at the time that I was building my book business, my speaking business. You know, I, I had been a year or two into it, but it was starting to take off. And I was floored to see you, number one, to see that you were into custom clothing. And there is nothing like when you put on something that was made for you. I mean, it is really spectacular. Nothing like the fit of a gold farb. Like a gold farb. So, you know, what, what I find so interesting about you, uh, and I think this is a lesson for people to take, is that obviously we've been, we know each other for 30 years. When we saw each other again, we connected totally. And you did what most successful people do inherently. And that is, who can I introduce you to? You introduced me to so many people in Palm Beach. Here, I was in a place I knew nobody. I had moved here with intent of not really knowing anybody and sort of just getting away from the Dade and Broward sort of mentality. And I land here. You know, I don't think there's any coincidences. I run into you. And in short order, 
I thought you were the mayor. You know a lot of people in this town. Well, one of the things that I learned when I was both a recruiter and in this business is that in order for you to really build your business, increase your business, is that you have to have a lot of high visibility. So my charter, actually my whole business model when I started the custom clothing business was that I was going to be as visible as possible, get involved with as many um, both chambers, civic organizations, business organizations, and nonprofits that I could that would expose me to uh, the people that I wanted to meet. And the key there is, is that I showed up at everything and never missed a meeting, never missed an event. And the biggest thing is, is that I do have a skill in that I remember people's names. And I can walk up to somebody and may not, they may not remember me, but I'll remember them. And not only will I remember them, I will tell them where we met. And so I have this, that, that connectability builds a level of trust because, or, well, so, so sort of a rapport, but then builds a level of trust because this guy listens, he's interested in me. And, you know, it's one of the other things you talk about in LinkedIn Like a Pro is that it's always about them. It's not about you when you meet somebody. And that's the misconception of networking that people have is that they go to a meeting and it's all about, hey, how are you doing? My name is Bob. I do clothing. Nice to meet you. And you go on to the next person. They go, hi, my name is Bob. I'm that's not how. <laughs> so, and, um, so with the high visibility and consistency, which is even more important, um, I was able to build up uh, a, a nice, um, let's say, a, connect, a list of connections that I could call on at some point. And interestingly enough, Steve, I, I know you may not believe this, but almost all my business has come from people coming up to me, not going up to them. And it's because I developed the relationship before I developed the sale. And so I am more about let's, let's build on this. And then at some point, they may come down the line and say, hey, Bob, you know, I've been thinking about getting a suit or a couple of shirts or whatever. And I can't tell you how many people have done that only because I was there all the time. I took the time to build the relationship. And they knew that I was always going to be available. So, um, you know, so it worked. Well, I love that because obviously it's very linear to how I think. So, you know, the things that I take away, one of the rules in my book is networking is only one letter away from not working. And exactly. so clearly your strategy of being seen is a good one. And you can be seen um, in physical and you can be seen in virtual. And even though the world has changed, if you disappear, people don't remember who you are or what you are. You know, so for me, what was even more telling was that, and this is the way you build your business through the contacts you have. And, you know, because you and I had had this great relationship and you introduced me to Palm Beach, doors opened that I never would have been able to get into in any other way. And I, you knew, you know me, I would, I didn't go in there trying to sell. I just wanted to meet. I, I mean, I met um, the mayor of, of, of Palm Beach. Uh, um, I forget her name, the golfer, um, you know. Um, Maria Moreno. Maria Moreno, you know. And the minute there was a Bob Goldfarb reference, oh yeah, we know Bob, you know. So what you, you've done, and in some respects I've done on your heels is you spread that wealth of, you know, awareness. Like, all right, I know this guy. I know who he knows. So right off the bat, I don't need to worry that he just, you know, that th this is not a good guy. He's a good guy yeah. if he's in Bob's world, vice versa. And so I, I don't think enough people give credence to the power of who you hang out with. And, you know, I talk about it often in the huddle. You know, the more people you hang out with, the closer you are to the people they hang out with. You know, and so yeah. you, you've done an amazing job, which is fantastic. I want to talk about something really good because the world has changed from physical. And you know me, I was on the road consistently and there wasn't one 
time that I traveled, and I mean this sincerely, was in one time I traveled that someone didn't stop me and go, man, I love your blazer. Man, I love your blazer. I'd be on stage. The instant I walked on stage, they would go, love that that guy's blazer. And, you know, Michelle, you know, obviously my wife played a big role in that. You and her work really well together. But I want you to talk, if you can, about now that we're living in a virtual world, it's not all sweatshirts and sweatpants. You know, no. showing up to a, a virtual meeting, you still have the opportunity to brand and make an impression. So I want you to talk about that. So absolutely. So, all right. So I'm going to, I'm going to give in to most of the guys because I know they do it. Uh, what you're wearing on top is not what you're wearing on the bottom. <laughs> so on zoom calls, uh, Cisco web calls, uh, I don't care what kind of call you're on. Uh, you still have a presence and are you there to do business or are you there just to say, Oh, somebody had a zoom call. I think I'll get on that. And you know, so there's a big difference because you show up, like today, like you and I both showed up, you know, ready to, to work. Um, people get a different perspective about who you are. So you still should at least wear a button up shirt. If not, if you can wear a blazer, great, but at least a button up shirt. And in this virtual world, which I really think we're going to be in for a while, I'm not sure how quickly we're going to get back to face to face uh, meetings, True. networks events, social events, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's really important to up your game and be ready to get on a call, a business call and, and look the part. Like, you know, it's, it's, you said something one time and forgive my foul mouth, but you said, put the fucking uniform on. And, uh, <laughs> and I always thought about that. That still sticks in my mind when you said that. If you're going to do the work, put the fucking uniform on. So, Well, people uh, will treat you differently for sure. And to such an end, I'll validate that, that when we started taking the huddle live across all of the platforms, we've been doing it for a while, but you know, right at the beginning of the pandemic, we knew people needed stuff. We said, let's just blow this out. We'll put it on every social media channel. I didn't wear a blazer in the beginning. And more than enough people said, what's up? What, you're not wearing a blazer? It was like I let them down and people have tuned in to see what kind of blazer I'm wearing, which leads me to you have helped me create a brand. Your brand is, and we, we've talked about this together, it's a gold farm. You know, there is right. clearly a differentiation between the patterns, the fits, Everything you do down to the buttons, the linings, um, you know, I have my name in, in all of these, you know. <laughs> so talk to me about that individual style. What is it's a gold farm? <laughs> so what makes it a gold farm is that I am meticulous about what I do. And, you know, there's some gentlemen I can work with. Like when I work with you, you have an idea what you want. You're going to be able to pick that out. And then Michelle and I, or you, Michelle and I sit down and we design what's going to go inside the buttons, the stitching, uh, how you want it designed, what kind of lining you want, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, I do the same thing for shirts, you know, with shirts, you can have a different collar. You can have a placket or no placket. You could have French cuffs or no cuffs. You could have pocket or no pocket. You could have a certain length that could be worn out or worn in. So there's all kinds of meticulous things that have to take place. I also am meticulous about the way I measure. So I measure to the eighth of an inch. Uh, when I'm taking over 20 measurements of a guy, um, I want to make sure I got the perfect fit. Uh, everybody can sell clothing. Everybody can have patterns to sell, but if, if the clothing doesn't fit well, you might as well toss it in the trash. It's not really worth anything. So for me, first and foremost, it's always about the fit. And when I consult with a client, I want to know who they are. You know, so are they looking to build a wardrobe? Are they looking to uh, change a wardrobe? Are they looking for a totally new look? Are they, uh, uh, you know, want to get outside their box, which I try to take a lot of people outside their box if I can. So it's, it's all about that personal one-on-one -on -one, high level concierge service where I'm going to them in their home or office, I'm spending two hours with them or more, 
to decide how to design these exact outfits. And, you know, what make, what sets me apart from others is that I just am so meticulous and that I am so about the customer experience. I mean, that's what it's all about. So, you know, that's what makes it a gold farb. Uh, I'm fortunate I work with a really good manufacturer. When I send them specs, they send me what I sent back. And, um, you know, when it works. So, um, so. I love and, it. So, and I'm saying our- so the biggest thing is uh, when I tell people, they say, what do you do? Well, I say, I save men time. And they go, well, what does that mean? It says, well, if you think about going to a mall or a store or stuff like that, uh, you're going to have to make at least two trips to get a suit. You have to buy the suit and get it altered. And it's off the rack, so it wasn't made for you. And so that's time taken away from either your office or your family on the weekend. So I'm saving you time. I'm also saving you money because, truthfully, my pricing is equivalent to if your guy goes to Saks or Nordstrom or Neiman Marcus or Brooks Brothers, my stuff customized is about the same price as theirs is off the rack. So I'm giving them, you know, the the, the benefit of having a better product at the same price plus the concierge service. I was, you know, interestingly enough, in the beginning when we started to do business together, I was overwhelmed at. How, like I had made up in my mind, oh, custom is just going to be way out of line. And you're really, really not. In the last minute that we're together, talk to us so that all the people that are watching this know how are you doing it virtually now? So you can't visit your house or you can't visit their office. Are you doing virtual setups where you can walk people through the fabrics and go like that? I, I, I can do that virtually with the fabrics, but I can only do that with existing clients. I really need to be face-to-face to measure somebody to get it correct. Unlike M. Taylor or Trunk Club or any of those people that profess to be better than an on-site tailor in measuring because you take a picture of yourself, uh, I'm sorry, that's just not true. <laughs> and um, so for existing clients, yes, I can send them virtual folders where they can look at fabrics and decide what they like. And then afterwards, I can send them a virtual folder of lint linings, buttons, et cetera, et cetera, so they can all pick it out. And uh, for, ex- for new clients, I am still happy to go meet somebody. I always wear a mask. I've had five COVID negative tests. So I always- Atta boy. Once in a while to make sure. And, um, you know, I'm looking to take care of anybody who wants to look sharp on their Zoom calls. But, you know, every once in a while, some people are still going to the office and they want to have that professional look. Love it. It has been awesome spending time with you. I am thrilled for what you've been able to do for me and hopefully some of my audience, because I believe if it's not a gold farm, it's not real. There you go, my friend. Thank Love you, you so my much. man. Love you, my man. You be good. Take care. Rest at home. Bye-bye. Thanks.